Creative Katie, Karen Birchall here, and welcome to an art journal tutorial, or should I say tutorials? There are four tutorials here, and they are packed with techniques. So grab your tea, grab your coffee, and come back. So first up, I have these gel prints that I prepared for the Index Card of Day Challenge. Now some of them I've done some things on it and I didn't like it. Some of them I just simply don't like. So what I'm doing is I'm just brayering a coat of gesso on top of them. Now on this one, I'm gonna leave all those pinks and purples shining through. And sometimes you're gonna see some of the markings there. It just pushes back, whatever. Some you really wanna get rid of more of it. So you're going to add another coat. And brayering gives it this wonderful texture that prepares it for whatever you've got going on next. So the prompt, one of the prompts was hydrangea and I love hydrangea so I chose to do four hydrangea inspired prompts. So here's the first one and that is actually a hydrangea picture from my backyard that I printed off onto rice paper and I'm going to use this to decoupage down onto my iCat. So this is a great way of using your own photos. Now I could have printed this off on tissue paper. I chose rice paper. It has, it's a little more substantial, easier to work, work, work with, and it's way more forgiving. So I'm just cutting this out. I'm not exactly sure at this point, what I'm going to do with it. And then I get inspired. And yes, I know last week I did a Julie Nutting doll with feathers. And this time I'm turning my hydrangea blossom into her dress. And I have plans to do more of these using some of the materials that I already have in my stash. So lots of creativity coming on. So I want to add some interest to the background and pull the colors, of course, from my hydrangea picture. This stencil is called Ethereal, and you can get this stencil at Ninny's Napkins. She has all, a lot of TCW 6-inch stencils, as well as the TCW Shopify link that are both in the description box below. So I'm using the purple dioxazine purple and deep violet there to just add to the background. But I'm really liking the high amount of white in there. But I did want to introduce the hydrangea colors to there. Now, this Julie Nutting doll, I have a whole bunch of these done. I made a lot of fridge magnets with them. So they're just kind of at the ready, partially done. And this one I matched, her top really matched. So I'm flipping through my quote journal. These are my own sentiments that are available at Ninny's Napkins. And there's a link if you're interested in purchasing my sentiment packs, you can go there and look them out, check them out. And I have decided that, you know, I'm doing all four on hydrangea. I'm going to pick the theme of perseverance. And so for this one, I picked, if you stumble, make it part of the dance. It looks like she's wearing a ball gown. gluing that down and pretty much without editing the skirt whatsoever. It just looks like a flowy, billowy, layered ball gown. I absolutely love it. Part of the trouble that I had in with the iCats is that the substrate, it's small. It's about five by seven. Here I'm using my Secura glaze pen. I use this an awful lot. It's quick, it's easy, and it's permanent. Love them, they go work so well. Now I'm just adding a little bit of shading and highlighting using my float acrylic technique. Just to make the focal image pop off the background. Just adding a little bit more here and there. Shading around the outside edges. And giving it a dry. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of highlights. And this is how I make this my own. 
I'm taking picture. Don't have your own pictures? Calendars, magazines have lots of florals. Look at them differently. How can you use the magazines in a different way? Just adding a few more in some what I consider blank areas. And here is the finished eye cat. I absolutely love it. Stay tuned for more Julie Nutting girls. Now with this one, I'm using a napkin. Now in my Perseverance pack, my themed packs, I have a couple sheets of background, script, different kind of fonts. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to print it out onto tissue paper. I'm making my own designer tissue paper with different script fonts using the background sheet. So I'm taping this down to a piece of copy paper. Now I'm going to be totally honest, this jammed and I had a bit of a struggle getting it through the printer this time. That doesn't always happen, but it does happen occasionally. So use your own discretion. Now here's the napkin. This is called Flores de Jardin. Excuse my French. And this was supplied to me by Ninny's Napkins and her um, web page is in the description box below. And I'm removing two layers of the white tissue or tissue napkin. And now I am water cutting with my liner brush what I think I'm going to use. At that time I was going to use, I think that's a rose along with the hydrangea, and then I edited that out and I just will save that to be used on another time. There's lots of napkin left. Now I wanted a bright colorful background, so I'm going with yellow and lime green and I'm mixing the paints right on the background. Now this was gessoed initially, this stencil is called Seahorse, but I love this foliage look there. And Maidenhair Fern, another foliage one. And I'm using a darker green here. I think it's called Hooker's Green to just add those details. I wanted some interest in my background, but I didn't want it to, to compete with my focal image. Now, here I have the tissue paper with that background sheet from my themed pack. And I ripped it and, you know, I was gonna put it in a couple areas. I could have just left it completely together and just glued it down. Now remember, tissue paper is gonna dry, dry, or as soon as it gets wet, it's gonna go completely translucent. So it's gonna knock that background 95% and you're going to see the script. And that's what I want it to see. It makes it a nice little detail, something peeking through later on. And this has all these, their phrases from the Perseverance pack. And so I like putting the, the words behind it. So I'm kind of like sending messages to someone, the hidden, the gift underneath it all. So now I've, I've cut out several of the hydrangeas from the napkin and I'm just playing with the orientation. Do I like this one? Do I like this one? How do I want to do this? And so I finally decide where I want to put it. Put a coat of fluid matte medium underneath and on top. Now because it's green underneath, my hydrangeas turn a slight greenish hue, which there are hydrangeas that look exactly like that. First, you gotta, you know, try to or figure out where things are gonna go 50 times different ways. Sometimes you just overthink, right? Gluing down the sentiment. As life offers you a second chance, it's called tomorrow. So persevere, don't give up. Edging with black, 
as you've seen me do how many times. I just like how that frames and brings everything into focus. Secure a glaze pen outlining. And then because I wanted the hydrangeas to be a little bit brighter, I grabbed my liner brush and I have blue and purple and deep violet and white gesso. And I'm just achieving a painterly effect, just painting in the colors, using the napkin as my guide. But you can see the difference from the one that I did at the top and the other two that have not been done. That's a personal preference. You could have left it just that way and it would have been fine. But this is another technique. Right now in on Vancouver Island in Victoria, BC, it is my hydrangeas are just starting to bloom, you know, and they've I've got all sorts of colors. And so this is a real tribute to them and all the colors that they come in. I've always loved hydrangeas and I feel so blessed to be able to live in a place right now where I can grow them. Who knew that there were so many different varieties of hydrangeas and colors? Oh my. I really like the way the purple plays off the lime green in the background. Outlining the whole page. The names and links to the stencils and the secure glaze pan and different things that I use in this video can be found below. Now here's a sneak peek of number three. And for this one, I'm using this Stampendous stamp. Now it has this whole mop there, comes with a little bit of a stencil. And I decided that I'm going to do it a little bit differently because that's one of the things that I want to do with the index card a day challenge is to try different techniques on these small pieces of art and just you know gain inspiration from it so I'm mixing the colors I've got deep violet Prussian blue dioxazine purple and I'm mixing it up I don't want to get it too blendy because I want all those colors of the hydrangea and I'm just put doing this on a sheet of copy paper there may this may be even just something from the recycle bin for that matter. There could be text on the back. So once this is all painted, I'm just going to set it aside and dry it. Now this is my thick gesso. It wasn't intended to be thick. It just gets thick over time. And I am using that one stamp and I'm stamping with the thick gesso. If you don't have thick gesso, you can mix a modeling paste with regular gesso and try that out, or just try with plain gesso. The thick gesso gives a wonderful texture. So it, it's kind of lifted a little bit. And I love how the white shows up against the blue background. Once you're done stamping with gesso or acrylic paint with your stamps, make sure you clean them. I spray them with my Murphy's oil soap and I get a brush in there or to old toothbrush that you've put through the dishwasher and just get all the paint out of the nooks and crannies. So once this is all dry, I am just going to cut out these hydrangea blossoms. And I wanted all these different colors because I wasn't sure which one I wanted, but I wanted to have variety in my hydrangea. So I'm cutting, cutting them out and just tossing them there. And whatever I don't use is just gonna go into my stash 
and it will be ready for me to use on another day. Once that's done, I decide, okay, what do I want to do for a background? I've already done a green background. And so I decide I'm going to do kind of an ombre. So I'm putting a little bit of green, blending it with yellow. I'm going for the brights this time. Adding some orange and mixing the yellow and the orange and then quinacridone magenta. And I'm doing getting the blending in between. And I'm being careful trying not to get paint on the other side because that's a finished eye cad. This is called Lush Petal. And I'm using white paint through the stencil here. And I just love the look with the bright colors. Now I'm painting some green on a paper. I'm going to stamp out the leaves that come with that hydrangea stamp from Stampendous. Using the shelf liner to put in some black marks, just other details so it's not so plain, and then stamping with archival ink. Decided I needed a couple leaves. And then I just work on my composition. I'm just piling those little, little hydrangea blossoms on there. Now, truth be told, the blossoms are probably a little big for this substrate, for this size, the 5 by 7 but I absolutely love them. And I will be doing this again on a bigger art journal page or maybe a canvas. Now, I'm layering these down, mixing the colors so that different colors are showing up different places. And once I get a base, I'm going to glue the next ones down or the top layer down but they're not going to be glued down flat they're going to be 3d so i'm fitting them in gluing them down playing with it so i have that nice rounded ball that of hydrangea loveliness And just as I'm watching this, I'm getting another idea for another art journal page using those hydrangea blossoms, which may not even end up being hydrangea blossoms in the next art journal page. I'm going to use it for something else. So there I'm playing with the petals to so they're 3D. Cut out the quote, never give up, great things take time. Edging with black. Now you could use this to be a little all pencil here. You could use charcoal. I like using the float acrylic technique because it is permanent when it dries. Just makes life easier. Thought I might do a little bit of shading in the flowers, but decided that it really didn't add anything. Outlining the sentiment. Thought about dotting the centers. Didn't like how it looked with the black. Outline the page. And then I just needed to splatter. Didn't like where some of the splatters are because everything is either acrylic paint or it has a good coat of matte fluid medium on it. You can lift it off with a baby wipe very easily. So there we have three. And there we have also, you can see the 3D effect. I love how that looks. That would look so amazing on a canvas. So number four, I'm going to start with 
a gessoed sheet. And that is important because you need to turn your paper into non-porous because I'm going to put paint on here and remove the paint through the stencil. I'm using bright aqua paint mostly, and then I'm adding a little bit of quinacridone magenta to it. I'm keeping it wet. And I know that the magenta and the light bright aqua are going to make that beautiful hydrangea purple. Then I put the stencil down, got my baby wipe, and I'm lifting it off. And it kind of gives you that, that white look, adding a little bit more color in some spaces, lifting it off again. Quick, easy, wonderful background. I have leftover paint. I'm grabbing my brayer. Now this sheet is a sheet that I'm going to turn into one of my mini zines. And I've been putting all my leftover paints on it and I started brayering on it and I'm loving the effect. So one of these days you're going to see me take this sheet and turn it into a mini zine. So here's a hydrangea again, a close up, and I'm pulling the colors from there. Now I'm going to do some finger paint florals. I just gave myself a guideline of where I want, what shape I want the hydrangea. And I have quinacridone magenta, I've got dioxazine purple, white gesso, and a little bit of Prussian blue. And I'm getting two colors or three colors in on my finger, pressing it in, and just filling in that area. I'm not overthinking it. I'm not too worried about making it perfect. It's very abstract and very freeing. I want variety of colors. I want the hydrangea that has more of a pink or magenta tone to it than the blue. And I'm filling it in and I'm leaving some of that white space, which I'm going to cut out later. Now I'm doing this on white paper because I am going to cut it out and glue it down. This is also a way you can, it's very freeing because when you do it on this, if it totally goes bad, just start over. Loving the, how the colors are going to really pop off that background. The stencil that I removed the paint through, that's called Screen View, and it's such a perfect stencil for a non specific background. I'm getting a lot of use out of it. The eye is going to see this hydrangea, see this as a hydrangea bush. It's going to fill in all the details that we're not putting in. So I'm going to let that dry. A little more paint going on to this sheet of paper. It's a great way of using up that leftover paint and having something to show for it at the end. Loving the look of this. Now I have some lace and I had colored it blue, Prussian blue, and it wasn't dark enough. So I wanted it darker because I had an idea to incorporate it into this page. It was coming through and I thought, oh, what if I put it on here? I'll get some marks. But that really didn't work the way I wanted. It wasn't colorizing the, the um, lace too well. So I just put the lace in a ball, wet the paint, and get it good and sopping wet so it's a dark, dark Prussian blue. Looking for more sentiments from my Perseverance pack, I pick out a couple that I might use. I'm cutting them out because, of course, I'm going to addition them and see if they work. And there's the purple ribbon, or purple ribbon, blue ribbon, and I'm going to put the hydrangea blossom down below. I'm just getting my options ready. Now I'm going to cut out my hydrangea. Now here I can shape the petals. If the petal didn't look like the petal, I can shape it, I can cut it, I can edit. I'm going to be cutting out a lot of the white, either with the scissors or later with an X-Acto knife. Now with the, with the X-Acto knife, Make sure your blades are sharp, because if they're not, you're just going to rip the paper, not cut it.
and I'm holding it down a little bit, getting those bits, little bits out. Looking, looking at the size, I'm going to cut this however I want it, and I can layer it up. So now I want the white centers, like you see in the picture. So you can go to stock photos, your own photos, your own garden, and see what you, what's in nature. So I'm liking the look of it. Now I'm using my Secura glaze pen, and I'm very quickly, very loosely sketching around the hydrangeas. I am not being very careful at all. I don't care if I get all of them. I don't care if I have it perfect. I'm just outlining it, giving a little definition to the blossoms. Now I put the lace on there and take it, take a picture with the lace and without the lace. And I decide the lace is going into my stash. I am not using it. I love the background and the colors that this turned out to be. So I'm doing a final decision on the sentiment. And I said, if you're tired of starting over, stop giving up. Before I glue down, it's just easier to shade around the outside edges. You know I'm going to do it, so. Now, I don't want it to get in where the um, coils are in the ha old Happy Planner. Remember, this is old Happy Planner. This is, I'm re repurposing it, recycling it and gluing it down. And then I've cut off this other piece and I'm just gonna layer that on to make the shape that I want. And I could use any bits from the second one, cut them off, add them. However, basically I'm gonna be the composer of this hydrangea bush, blossom. Oops, sorry for my head in there. Outlining with the Secura Glaze. So a lot of the finishing techniques are identical on all four. Giving it a good dry. This works. Those colors are across from each other on the color wheel. That's why it works so well. And there are my four hydrangea-inspired eye cats. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave, tell me which one you like the best in the comment section below. Which technique are you going to try? Please join my Facebook group, Mixed Media Creations, and follow me on Instagram at Creative Katie.